This is off planet radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Off Planet Radio. I'm Emily Moyer and Randy Moggins is out this evening. He has a family member that's not well, so we will wish Randy and his family well and the show will go on despite that. And um, it's been a couple of weeks since I've had, we've had a regular show. Um, I have Sonia Barrett back with me for the next part in our series on the human game. I'm really excited about this. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, we left off last time with the mind. We started with the game, and we went to the mind, and this time we're going to talk about the body. And so a um, couple things. Before we, before you get started here, if you guys haven't watched her documentary, The Business of Disease, push pause right now. Go check that out, and you'll a lot of this conversation will be informed by that, so you'll be helping yourself out a little bit to have seen that. And it's also just an awesome and beautiful documentary. And... Um, yeah, so with no further ado, the author of Holographic Canvas and the creator of The Business of Disease, Sonia Barrett, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Oh, thank you so much. And I noticed you did say that um, you haven't had a regular show in a while. And I'm like, well, this isn't going to be regular either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, there's nothing regular about us. But there's anyway. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> We're, Good point. We're, I guess we don't actually. We never have any regular shows. But I guess exactly. Yeah, what, no. <laughs> what I guess I mean by regular is like a show with a guest. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think I think they figured that out. They figured right. out. I but yes, so. neither Sonia or I are anything close to regular. regular. So yeah. I mean, I I assume you're regular, but you're I'm not. Regular. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, well, According, according to the health of the body, we need to be regular. But uh, it's <laughs> in, in no other way. We're, we're both, in any room we sit in, we're the two craziest chicks. So. I know. And Ra Randy isn't here to monitor us today. So it's right. like the kids are just loose right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get wild, kids. <laughs> anyway, it's good to be back. It's good yeah, to be thank back. you. Yeah, I love absolutely. chatting with you guys. Yeah, me too. And uh, yeah, so, okay, so let's just kind of start here. Like, we're going to move into the body. And, and I'm kind of curious to know, like, you know, like, probably like most of us, we get into like looking at the alternative information. And some people, a lot of people come in through, get, get to the conspiracy or the weird stuff or the metaphysical or the sci-fi after they came in because they knew about chemtrails or GMOs or something like that. But you know, for, for me, and I, I'm kind of guessing maybe for you, you kind of got into some of the weirder information first. And then at a certain point on your journey, you really figured out that, hey, the health of the body has a lot to do with this. And so it kind of took you on some, you know, down some other roads and whatnot. So am I right about that? Can you tell me sort of how well, your journey through information led you to, you know, the health factor? Okay. So, so mine is sort of twofold. Um, I really actually began a health journey, an, an awareness, <laughs> believe it or not, when I was around 18, mm -hmm. believe, it, believe it or not, 18, 19, um, and, and to tell you how much I was really sort of uh, aligning with this idea uh, is my pregnancies and uh, making my own, you know, baby food and formula and, and all of that stuff. So, so I was already kind of there from 18, 19, 20, from, from that zone. I didn't know what I, would be, what I would come to know. I did not know to what degree, um, like I know now, but something in me. But then that was probably also based on the fact that there was already something in me, a realization about the body uh, since I was a, a child, since as far back as I can remember about the durability of the body. So there was, there was something there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then fast forward. Okay. So yeah, I, you know, I went through the vegetarian thing and all of that, but fast, fast forward. Um, I would say that when I went on my quest, like I really started to dig and you know how that is. 
yep. this conspiracy stuff always comes in. You know, you, you, you sort of start off with all of that. But I started off with the, the curiousness as far as the spiritual aspect and not knowing how to meditate. And I did take that journey um, in all of that light stuff. Then I embarked on, um, you know, politics and, you know, sovereign stuff. And it just all just sort of was coming out of nowhere. All because I think I started to realize about spirituality and religion and all of that and the deception. And it all just kind of mushed together. It all just started to kind of show up. Um, so, so, yeah, it kind of started, I think, that way. And as I went along, I started to take it even more seriously about the need to, um, to maintain the body, the significance of the body. And as I went along, it got even more so that way. It got even stronger in realizing just how abandoned the body is on one level. Yeah, we dress it up, we fix it up, you know, like something that's over there that you just do stuff too. You put makeup on it, women do, you dress it up, you do all of this, but no real meaning, no real profound meaning about the importance of having a body. And, and, and I think that, again, it's, that started to really cement the need for, um, you know, to, to really take care of this vehicle. So I don't know if that sort of answers your question. There's more to it, but that's kind of the, the gist of me so, beginning. So you had a health awareness and then you journeyed through all this other information, which then led you to really come to understand the importance of, uh, have a greater appreciation for the importance of the body. I, I, you know, I totally agree. So like, you know, I, um, I was an athlete growing up, so I understood the importance of taking care of the body, being strong, healthy and whatever. And then, you know, kind of when that ends um, and you get into your 20s and you kind of partying and whatever, like I was probably always healthier than the average person other than sort of the wicked sugar addiction that I had developed. But, you know, a person wouldn't have known it by looking at me. And I exercised a lot. And, you know, I too went through, you know, I was a vegetarian from the time I was 14 till I was 29 or 30, 29 or 30, um, you know, and I experimented with a lot of different stuff. Um, and then, you know, it was in my 30s when I really started to um, get into all this other kind of information. And um, the information is so, some of it is so dark and so dense and so like, really like paradigm shattering in some ways that like it d does begin to take a toll on your psyche mm -hmm. and your right. body. And it was definitely, I mean, I had lots of years of, you know, social programming, more other kinds of programming, undealt with trauma, all of that kind of stuff that had all built up. And it seemed like then this overwhelm of some of this information and starting to discover what some of it actually meant for me mm -hmm. was like the thing that was like the catalyst for like the beginning of a health crisis. And, mm -hmm. and, and then only when I sort of recognized that and started really, you know, taking care of myself and changing the diet and really focusing on it, did I then be able to, was, was I able to sort of integrate the information in a way that was helpful to me as opposed to harmful. Like, even though I knew all this shit, it was like I was paralyzed with information. You know, it was like I knew a bunch of stuff, but I was inert. I couldn't do anything with it. Right, right. And something about, you know, really learning to take care of my body, changing the diet, becoming refocused on exercise, not, you know, like not to be a competitive athlete anymore, but as, you know, a way of sort of, um, it helps me to process all this information, just to right. get out and move and whatnot. Um, and, and, and I think it's really important. And, and that's, you know, why I wanted to have this segment of the discussion with you. I notice so many people, both who are people in the alternative media and the consumers of alternative media, um, even, even though they're aware of all this stuff, a lot of them are super unhealthy. You know what I mean? A lot of them yeah. eat like junk food, don't exercise, smoking, vaping, a lot drinking a lot. Of people. A lot of yeah. people, especially in the sovereign movement. It would be shocking when I used to go to com um, common law court uh, in Vegas mm -hmm. um, some years back. It would be just mind boggling to see all the people. They're invested in this sovereignty movement listen to it sovereignty this freedom 
movement and fighting the system and they've got uh, they can hardly walk they've got all kinds of health issues their system is backing up basically uh the body is basically abandoned you know honesty abandoned rejected um it's like it's like having a, a child that um you just don't care for you just don't take care of the child at all and and that's what i saw a lot of is you know is that and and the investment was more in the piles of paperwork that they would bring in from think papers that they were filing um yeah you know it would be just a lot of that and it was it was a very it was a feeling of congestion that yeah. that's how it would feel like congestion when i saw all of all of that and the weight that they were carrying in their being from not paying attention to the vehicle you know at all it, it was of minimal importance so the question is and, and again yeah in my 30s like you, it really, it really started to, you know, get in there. Even though with the kids, I, I raised them uh, basically without allopathic medicine. I did, you know, all of that. I just started educating myself from a long time um, to operate from a healthy, a healthy perspective. Um, but I was going to tell you something else about um, that part of it with, with people um, and the body. I don't remember what it is, but just anyway, the fact is that what is interesting is the confusion of sovereignty. You're, you're looking to be sovereign and to be free, um, but somehow it just doesn't cross over to the body, to the importance of the body. Then I think, what is my point then? I'm fighting for all of this, but I think the validation people give themselves is that I'm fighting for this for my grandchildren, for my children, for everyone else. Um, and that's how we're very good at finding a way to escape, mm -hmm. you know, doing something that maybe we need to do. So we put it off on something else. So you hear a lot of that. I just want to make sure. Well, wouldn't you like to have a piece of that pie too? Wouldn't you like to experience that as well? It, it's like that doesn't even uh, come up. It's like, what's the point? If, if, if the body, if you're just going to go ahead and just die, your body is just going to fall apart, you're going to be sick, miserable, then what is the point then of doing anything? Mm -hmm. I, whether it be the, the, the new age movement, I don't want to, I don't want to sit around, you know, waiting for, as they say, your pie in the sky, basically, even if you're not, uh religious there is still new age programming as well there's all of that programming that is saying that um you know you're you're gonna go to somewhere else it, it, no matter what you're going somewhere else you're always like just not here i'm gonna go somewhere else so it doesn't really matter oh it's just the body yeah it's just, just a lot of that kind of validation i don't want to mention the person's name but big you know who it is um one of the, the, the big leaders, we might have talked about it in the New Age movement when he passed a couple of years ago. Um, it was interesting to hear also that dialogue. Oh, you know, he's, you know, he did, he did his time, which he did. He did this or he did that. And uh, he's not gone. He's just gone to uh, whatever, to just like a higher level or, but yet, this is just like stuff we tell ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he's gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just stuff we tell ourselves because we have to. We, we, we cannot. It's difficult for us to deal with. Well, what if all, none of that is like that? No, nobody wants to really deal with that. What if it's all about right here, right now, and really digging through and breaking through and understanding who you are, what the sensory system is, what if, what if that's necessary? And what if you go there and then you get wiped by the light again? I know I'm not going to go off on a tangent. What if you, you go through the light and you just get wiped all over and you got to come back and do it, start all over again. It's, there's a lot of factors here. Anyway, bottom line of it, you need a body and it's really important. And we're going to talk about why it's important. As yeah. Well. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, what you were just saying was really interesting about like, you know, I, I, like, I've done a lot of research on the sovereignty movement and I've observed it. I haven't really gotten, I never really went and started doing all that kind of stuff because I guess I kind of always had to say, wait a second, I didn't agree to any of this stuff anyway. So I don't know why I have to go, you know, file papers against it and whatever. And, um, you know, but I have observed and I've done a lot of research about it. So I wasn't really familiar with like, you know, the kind of people that show up to that kind of stuff. I know the people who talk about it on YouTube and on shows and whatever. But oh, it's intense. Know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of, you know, I've observed, I guess, more people from, you know, the, I guess I observed just because they're so, pre it's so prevalent, people from the new age community and the alternative media, and then people from my own, more my own community, which is people who are trying to resolve, you know, backgrounds with projects and programs and, and whatever. And there becomes some crossover between the two, because that's what the new age movement is really directed at is trapping those people as they come out mm -hmm. of, as, as they come out of stuff. And um, it is disturbing to me. I never felt this way, even when I wasn't taking care of my, like, even when I wasn't okay mm -hmm. like i never felt like the body didn't matter but there, it is shocking to me how many people really think that like eh the body's just my a meat sack it's not really who i am right. um or you know i can't wait to get out you of know, here i want I'm, yeah. I'm going to so much of this i hate this place i can't wait to get out of here yeah. like you know we're doing ascension and all that kind of stuff and like you know, I'm it's all about escaping. It's all it's about escape. escaping and getting out of here. It's all about running from this thing. Yeah. And um, it's, it, it, what's interesting is I never, ever hear that from people that have a really healthy body that take really yeah. good care of themselves and exercise and eat well. I always hear it from people who, you know, who aren't people are really, a bit more miserable. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know. I mean, which is understandable. If you're miserable, and if life, and, that, and, and it might not be that they've been miserable, miserable in their bodies, but if life, they feel like life has just been handing them lemons day in and day out, they're tired of it. If they feel like, you know what, I can't seem to have a good relationship. I, I am alone. I don't have a relationship uh, with anybody. Uh, I would, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's all kinds of reasons why people feel like, you know, something's got to be better. And that's what it is. It's that pie in the sky. Something's got to be better because this is lesser. This yeah. reality for people is always lesser in their minds. It's something that we just, you know, why do we even have to do this? And I hear people say that all the time. Well, you know, why do we have to come and come here and do this anyway? Well, if you're not here, then wherever you are, I mean, you, you, you don't even remember what that is. So who's to say that this is going to, that's going to feel, you know, what, for lack of a better word, better than this. How about this is, is, is a working it out and, and an expansion process and a, and an expanding into yourself process. And I, I refer to it as, you know, ascending into yourself because they're really, ultimately that's what you're doing. You're ascending into greater levels of, of who you are that you don't remember uh, how to get to or that that it exists you are ascending into yourself there's, no, there's nowhere to really go you know <laughs> there's nowhere to go there's no there's nowhere to go it's like trying to run from yourself you know yeah. um so i think that those factors uh for people when i say stop trying to it's not about escaping the matrix because people say well, how can i how can we escape this how can we you know get out of here or somebody else um, on Facebook had said about the money. I uh, felt, you know, well, things would be so much easier. It would be so much better. We just, and it was another, I think, sovereign people. If we could just get rid of the money. And I'm always thinking, well, if even if you got rid of that, the core issue at hand that is making you feel like you need to escape something has not been resolved. So it would be something else. Yeah. This is what people need to understand. It would be something else. Um, and the body, of course, because this is our sensory system, mm -hmm. it is the mechanism that we use to have the experience and to, to process all these emotions and feelings. Uh, it, it takes on a lot. There's a lot that it has to take on. It's like this machine that's constantly having to work and, and compensate, um, particularly when you have a, a, a being where the consciousness, meaning the awareness, is at such a low frequency. 
um, where the where the awareness is so limited, the perception is so limited, uh, everything is is so in a box, and reality, what reality can be becomes trapped in this in this box. That in itself is suffocating. You're actually suffocating the vessel. You're suffocating the cells. You're suffocating the the whole uh, flow, breathing process, the blood flow. Everything is technically being suffocated, and that's why thoughts can make the body acid. So there's so many factors involved here that uh, is not considered, is not thought about, and I, I think it's really important that people really start to understand the significance of what they're how they're perceiving life and how they're going about life and what their uh what their belief system is what their desires are what are their desires based on um so many factors and the sovereignty movement you know after a while i realized no i i mean i i was in it i mean i i was when i say i was in it i mean i i understood all the papers i mean all that stuff from the 90s so i was in it before you know all about the fonts and the boxes and how many oh, lines there had to be oh, I, oh my god <laughs> I, I i was i was in it so this is why yeah there's a lot of changes that have happened but i am familiar on a massive level of understanding this so this is why i can step back now um because it, there's so many people who are newer to to this and so they're talking and you know it looks like well sonia she doesn't talk about it. no because i've been there i've been there and what i realize is that you just come off of one list and you just go on another list. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That's what, yeah. That's it. You just yeah. move you from one list to the next list. If you get moved, um, you know, from a list. Uh, and so, so it's a very interesting um, perspective. It's an interesting understanding that we, um, that we have about what it is to be free, what mm -hmm. sovereignty really is. Um, it's the, it's this fight. It's this ongoing fight that is, is also really traumatizing to the, to the vehicle. Very yeah. traumatizing. Uh, so there's a lot of trauma. There's just a lot of trauma. And at the same time though, I must say that it serves its purpose. Like everything else, it serves its purpose. It's, it's the, what do they say? It's the journey, not the destination, but right. it's the journey. You and yeah. you have to go through this journey. And I am grateful to all that I came to understand. And um, I met Jordan Maxwell, you know, back then in the early nineties. And, um, and so, so yeah. And, and for anybody out there, let me just put a disclaimer because there are so many people out there that just get ridiculous. Ridiculous. I don't know if they're trolls or what. I will say Jordan's name and then somebody will make a comment about some derogatory comment. I'm like, why? Well, you know, it's like, what, what is your point? Think about that. What I'm speaking about is a journey, a journey in which I have embraced every buddy and every situation that I have encountered because every bit of it Mm -hmm. has brought me to this moment. And I did learn a lot from Jordan. I understand a lot about the system. Um, there is much that I've come to know. And it basically helped me to then um, on my own take it into this much bigger level of seeing how this minuscule matrix here um, is a replica of of, of, of a, a bigger, another bigger matrix, the matrix in a matrix. And then how the body then, um, how is the, how do, is the body designed then in, in, you know, in comparison to these constructs, everything is sort of operating off this a similar formula, same formula, basically. Uh, the body's a matrix, first of all. Um, this, you know, this whole construct and, oh, anyway, if we get into that, maybe, but yeah, we'll get you know, there. We, we, we need to understand what we're dealing with and, and why then it's so important that we begin to acknowledge this, this, uh, system, um, as a, as a system, it's what you use to get around in. It's not you, it's an aspect. It's, um. Uh, a version, what should I say? It's, it's a fat, the fabric of it is, is made from 
the substance that you are, the greater substance that you are, um, reduced to create this body so that we can travel around in it to have the sensations that we would not be able to have and to experience and to know joy and sadness and pain and happiness and, uh, you know, ridiculousness and, and all these judgments and all this other stuff. Oh, all, yeah, all this other stuff. We wouldn't be able to do it. And, and this is why we, we have this. Yeah. I mean, and just the condition that you keep it in is so, is paramount to how you experience this reality, whatever it is. And so let's get into, so, you know, you, you went from, I mean, pretty much, you know, you kind of pulled away from the sovereign mind radio and the things you were doing with that. And you sort of went off in this other direction and spent a couple of years really working on uh, your documentary, The Business of Disease. Why did you decide to do that? And what it really, like, what, what was that like? And you're still on your journey, but what was that like of your journey like for you? Sort of what, what was that? Why did you do it? And what, what is, you know, what did you, how did that complement all of this other stuff that you had already learned? You know, you already had done, the, you know, written the holographic can, you know, canvas a long time before that and had been playing with these really big ideas and then you kind of went into the sovereignty thing and then you got down to the body, kind of like just the process you just sort of right. described. So tell us yeah. about that. Tell us I, about that. I had already sort of moved away to some degree from that level of the sovereignty thing. Sovereign Mind Radio, for me, I had the Sovereign Mind Radio and Sovereign Mind Magazine. It, yeah. you know, I used to publish. And Sovereign Mind, for me, meant um, the freedom of mind, freedom. Even though I was interviewing certain people based on, you know, some of that kind of information uh, still. Uh, but I gradually just felt like, I just felt like it was, you know, it was just over. I was just done. It, it was no longer there for me. I wasn't interested in any kind of battle or fight. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. didn't want to do that. And so uh, I, it was like, okay, it was time to move forward. But in terms of, and I was fine with letting go of that. And, and that's something else that, you know, is challenging sometimes for many people mm -hmm. um, is letting go. You just have to know when to let go. And it, it's fluidity, it's flow. Okay, so you let that go. Ooh, I'm done. And I did the film. Oh, and then I did um, reality, um, the reality Bridge Magazine, but I did uh, another radio show, another podcast. Uh, and I, and I, just, I just moved according to the moment. Uh, but the film itself, what triggered me producing that film uh, was my going into the darn store. And, and, and I didn't know it was Breast Cancer Awareness Month because I wasn't paying attention. I don't even know if October was that month. I, I tell you how much I pay attention. I didn't even know. I had no idea there, there was even like a Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I, I don't think I knew. So I was like, God, why are these people, you know, every time I go in, I'm like, I felt like they were pitching me like breast cancer. Like it was like, they're pitching it to me, you know? And, and so I thought, gosh, what is happening with this pink ribbon thing? What is going on with, you know, how are we taking this in? How are we processing that this? I wondered if from the level of symbols, what our what our minds how our minds were interpreting this how much fear was now being um built you know formed in our minds uh what was were we cementing more of the possibility were, was this i felt like it was just it was being marketed more than anything else uh you say something enough you know people start to wonder if something could happen to them it's just the way the human mind is and they start down this path so so that's how i started i thought you know i am going to interview a few people so i didn't intend to try to, to do this like a feature film it was not the plan i was going to do like a youtube video <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just going to interview a few people. And then surprisingly, everybody that I mentioned it to, to for the interview, they like all immediately said yes. And, uh, and Anne Baroque was one of those people, mm. just awesome, awesome, awesome being just one of the most incredibly supportive people in the making of this film. And mm. I got to say, thank you, Anne, wherever you are. Thank you. Um, 
but but so that is what really triggered me to do um, that film. And and as I did a little bit of investigating, you know, about um, uh, breast cancer and and the marketing of it, and even the idea of the color pink. Uh, and and realizing that at one time pink was for boys and blue was for girls. Really? And yeah, yeah. Pink pink used to be for boys because it was more along the lines of um, uh, the the one the col the blood the color and it, it was more significant with war and battle and a, a ma you know young man you know being strong he's got to go out and fight. So it, it, it was more along those lines why pink was for them. It was, you know, blood. Wow. Yeah. Um, and blue was supposed to be a softer color for right. girls. Peaceful, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so I thought, how interesting. Now, what, what I really found interesting about that is the subtle way in which it all got switched. And, and you yeah. really, it made you stop and think, all the things that have been switched all the time, all the time. That Everything you know, is the inverse of what it actually yeah, is. Right. And, yeah. and, and nobody knows when that happens because what? You only know what you know when you come in on the planet. However things are, that's what you take. You take it at face value. That becomes your reality. That's how it is. And that's it. So over a period of time, there's no, nobody's going to question it because generation, a couple of generations later, that's the norm. This is how things become normalized um, is, is by this kind of transition. So yes, they know the system. Those that run things know what they're doing. When they initiate certain things, they know that in 20 years or 30 years, a new generation will have sprung up and that new thought or concept will become the norm and then that gets passed on to the next generation and that's that's basically what happens so we don't question it so so we all have gone along with it I, you know i was never a pink person no there's anything wrong with pink but i was never a pink person uh but to see that that every time i would see pink and i thought wow how is everybody's thinking this and i asked other people what do you feel when you see, you know, pink, pink ribbon, even if it's not pink ribbon, pink is, is now somehow ingrained in our minds. We don't realize that, but it changes something. You see anybody, you see in, in pink. With pink, that tone, that, that, that sort that, of that particular, pink tone. Yeah. yeah, that particular tone um, says something. And also what's interesting too, and it's been a while, so forgive me if I'm not as clear, yeah. but people can go and actually read the marketing of breast cancer, which is an article that I did that made its way all over the internet. And it's on my website. It's on the business of disease.com too. I think it's on the real Sonia Barrett.com, but the marketing of breast cancer. Um, and you could probably type it in to Google and put my name and it'll make it easier for it to come up. And it's a long article that goes into a lot but, but then the color, when the color got switched back with the, the pink, that light color pink also has to do with the, um, the, the red blood cells, the, the can cancer cells, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was real interesting. It has to do with something about the color of the, hmm. uh, yeah, you, you can look it up. And I, like I said, it's in the article. It's been a while since, since I've, had, I've talked about it. But even that, because I, and I wondered and I started to investigate it and it was like, oh, so that color pink has a little bit more commonality with that which is being marketed. Mm -hmm. why, do, why do they pick, choose pink? Yeah. You know, you know it's so, so there is, there's nothing that when it comes to marketing, that is by chance. Yeah. It's, it's not by chance. Yeah. So you just said a couple of things that I found really interesting. First of all, just indulge me real quickly. I, my own personal thing here. How did you find Anne? How, Cause you know, you're finding her led me to finding her and she was very, is important to me and maybe even more than she was to you. How did you find her? How did you connect? How did you connect and, and make that sort of. How did I find Anne? That's a good question. 
That's a good question. How did I find, it's been, it's like, I feel like I've, I've known her for such a long time yep. that I couldn't remember when, I don't remember. I think it might've been random. And she happened to have her office as well. I loved whatever I ran into and saw, which she's talking about with Candida yeah. uh, and all of that. And uh, her office was right over there in Studio City. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. You don't I don't remember. remember. I just, re yeah, I just remember when we finally had met. I thought, wow, what a beautiful lady. Yeah. Um, really yeah, inside and out. Um, but yeah, it had been, because that was back in like 2010 or 2000. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I met her in 2014. Yeah. Uh, and she, like, I met her just not that long after you guys had filmed. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually sort of one of the things that we bonded over because she told me and I, she, I, I knew who you were. You know what I mean? Right, she, right. Oh, I just made this movie with this woman, Sonia Barrett. Do you know who she is? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've been following her work for a number of years and whatever. So, okay. So you knew her for a couple of years before you, um, before um, you But no, that was, no, the idea for the film was born in 2010. Oh, okay. It took a while to, to get that film done. Yeah. Uh, but the idea was born in 2010 and it was, it was, it was an idea um, that I gradually built into, you know, it coming about and, and, and the journey of that film uh, show coming out, making it happen, not, not, not knowing how to do a film and not knowing where you're going to get money from and funding. And, and it was, it was a real journey in, persistence and also being in the flow and being able to step back yeah and 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 recognizing when the pro that the project has a life of its own mm -hmm. and that it was actually guiding me and that those moments when it was just time to just step away i i would step away and then there would suddenly be a resurgence again at some point yeah uh so it's it's it was this dance yeah Okay, so then you also talked about this. I I'm, I'm, was very fascinated and mm -hmm. on one sense surprised. And then when I really sit and think about it, not surprised with what you just had to say about pink and blue mm -hmm. and, and, and the switching, right? Because they've switched everything. And right. you know, now we're in this weird switching mm -hmm. of everything. <laughs> everything mm -hmm. is switching place. But you know, it's that the pink, like the, I always find it like so interesting, like when, They'll have like the football and the baseball players all like wearing pink, you know, mm. they'll have their pink shoes on. And I'm like, oh, how silly they look. That's what it was for. It was yeah. the yeah, NFL store. Was yeah. Playing. Yeah. So it was, you know, but so it's interesting that this thing we now think, you know, they're doing it for breast cancer, but also we, we, we think, okay, they look silly running around in their pink tennis shoes. You know what I mean? Like we have all had the question is, is part of this having them wear it really, you know, they say it's for breast cancer, but is it also partly about the, you know, emasculation, you know, or, or demasculinizing men, but you're saying that it used to be that pink was for boys. So this is just kind of blowing my mind, which you always say something that blows my mind. Yeah, um, it was for boys, but then the NFL store actually, um, when, when you used to, I don't know if they do it now, but back then, even in 2010, 11, 12, um, they during breast cancer awareness month they everything would be like breast cancer stuff pink everything pink yeah. stuff every everything um and and then outside of that there's um the breast cancer barbie that would trip me out too the you breast know? cancer the barbie? barbie yeah she they had her barbie no but uh don't give them any ideas <laughs> they, they're probably working on it right now but yeah it was uh pink barbie for yeah it wow. was pink barbie uh, and then all the toilet paper with the pink ribbons all over it. Yep. It was just so much. And I'm like, what is happening with people's brains, their minds right now? This is like bombarding somebody with that idea. Just, well, just throwing it out there. Just think, I remember, so I remember first, it was before the movie came out, but I remember listening to an interview with you. It was back in like 2013 or something. Mm -hmm. like you were on with Sherry, with you and Sherry were being interviewed. I can't remember if it was on Red Ice or if it was on some show, which show was back when Red Ice produced content that I was interested in. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um, you know, so you guys were talking about stuff and this is the first time I'd really heard you talk about it. And you were talking about that, you saw this sign that had all the different rainbow, the different color, but the different ribbons for the different diseases, right? Mm -hmm. And that it was really about getting people to 
um, make a space in their minds and in their hearts for this experience, whether it was going to be for them directly or, or, you know, someone in their family or a friend. And I thought, wow, that's like, you know, that, that's, that's exactly right. And you even just look at, um, you know, I'm sure you're very familiar with color coded programming, you right. know what I mean? Which is something, which is a social phenomenon, but also something that has been used in mind control with the colors of the light spectrum, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then, also, well, our first language is symbols. So, yes. you know, the, the little the little ribbon, the, cur the ribbon yeah. is. I mean, to me, it, I'm looking at it. I'm thinking sigil magic. So we have, yeah. you know, color coded programming and oh, sigil yeah. magic. Yeah, it carries more. A symbol carries more information, more data than uh, words than speaking. Mm -hmm. It has so much more um, in it, and uh, and that's the reason why they do it. Um, you, you know, there's, there's colors and then there is sound in some cases that's connected with, you know, with the color there, there's all kinds of aligning, um, uh, what should I call it? Tools or, or, or whatever you want, however you want to put it, but, but it's packaged mm -hmm. and, and either a sound might trigger you along with, uh, um, the, the color, or you might just see the color and you're triggered it just you know how depending on how it's done but everybody uncles uh, uh sisters brothers husbands you know daughter everybody is sort of was sort of is sort of being bombarded mm -hmm. with this idea and then right behind that i was the reason why i was looking down i must apologize is because whoops i was looking for that article that's why i was looking yeah. down. i was trying to find it um, so that um, I could find that that section and, and read it. Um, and of course I do that. And then I, I like go completely off topic of, of what I was going to say. I was going to say something about um, the, the uh, husbands and, you know, wives and everybody. Everybody basically has picked up that program mm -hmm. of worry and concern for a loved one. So it's not just the women. And following that was Angelina Jolie, uh -huh. um, other celebrities, but she was actually very featured. And I think I yep. might have talked about that on Red Eyes. It might have been one of the- That was a program. Uh, the, that was yeah. a program they were trying to run for yeah. sure. It yeah. was definitely a program, um, Removing Healthy Breasts, because that article that I did talks about that too, um, Removing Healthy Breasts based on um, a particular gene. And what I found interesting, what I still find interesting, she's not as eh, in your face anymore, but because they sell her before that, they sell her as a strong woman, this very strong woman. Well, yeah, Lara Croft, <laughs> you know, yeah. like they sell her as, as that yet, yet there's a fragility to this person. Yeah. You know, this person has a lot of, like everybody has issues, but she's got a lot going on with her but they sell it. And it's like, if she could do it, then, you know, then you can. And she'll get how right. strong and tough she is. And then we went on that journey with, um, with, with, with other celebrities, either the scare or um, I remember when they were cutting off hair, what's her name? Robin, the uh, Robin, Robin Robbins. Isn't that yeah. Her? Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was just a whole lot. We don't even, it's kind of tapered a little bit, but it was the, um, the, the balling of the head, it, you know, they, it was okay. Uh, removing the breast, uh, at one point there was more, uh, in a way, like humor with it. Um, you know, one woman, I think if I remember, I saw a picture where she was just being free and showing, you know, the, the scars that, you know, she didn't have her breast, it was gone. And so, we are supposed to then what take that in and go yes there's you know she's being free she's showing um that she can be okay not recognizing the flip side of that the flip side of that has nothing to do with that the flip side of it is to get is is women and and, and a society getting a society to trivialize um a woman's body parts yeah to trivialize it like okay well they're just breasts you're not using them anymore you don't really need them just take you know you can mm -hmm. you can take them off it's not a big deal yep um you know right up there with removing your uterus 
because you know it's just not a big deal you take it out and then look what came next look where we are now where everybody's just taking pills and removing body parts and putting new body parts on and whatever like it's all just doesn't matter and eh, you know you want sort of you, yeah it is it, it, that was particularly the ramp. women yeah particularly the women it, it was it was a huge thing in terms of looking at the women and i've always been one of yes i've been one of those women uh in in all that i do where people very seldom hear me like talk about like women i don't get on this women rant because I just do what I do and not from the perspective of, Oh, I'm a woman. Look at me. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm doing what I'm doing woman or not. This is me. Yeah. Um, that's it. I don't, I don't need the validation of, Oh, she's a woman and she's doing all of that. What does that even mean? Yeah. Um, so I don't come at things from that standpoint. So when I stepped back and I looked at the program that was being run, that what was actually being done to the psyche it was like, wow. And women are going, oh yeah, well, you know, I think we're gonna do the, sur I'm gonna do the surgery just in case, just in case, you know. Um, and, and there's almost this sense of uh, feeling almost like guilty for not being tough enough to go ahead and do something like that. Wow, yeah. Uh, um, and, and, the, and the bosom, the, the breasts, what they represent is nurture. Mm -hmm. what, what has been missing from this madness that, that has been male dominated, yet I'm not coming at it from a standpoint of woman, rah, rah, hear, we roar, hear me roar. <laughs> right. I'm looking at it for what it is, that this has been the way it is, is that it's, everything has been run one-sided. It, it, it's, um, it's a positive and a negative charge uh, of male and female to to make everything work, just like you can't plug a positive in a positive socket. It just does not work as you're gonna have all kinds of explosion. Well, this is what we have. You've got the male dominance of running a reality that has um, a, a positive and a negative charge in it. And it's running everything, it's just sort of run it into the freaking ground. Um, and then the idea of women are too emotional, all kinds of madness. It's, it's all kinds of ridiculousness. But to be emotional is okay. That's a release. If you're if you're emotional, then then that's fine. What's what's wrong with that? But we're made to think that it's something is wrong. You you've got to now be very male like. Well, what does that mean? You know. So it's 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 all of these pieces that um have been sort of thrown at us and the woman piece being like pushed more further down pushed further down as being um unimportant in insignificant and i say as soon as men start to um readily remove their testicles be, you know because this you know genetic issue just take them off right <laughs> you know just, uh, just cut them off <laughs> then uh yeah then that then that'll make sense but i but i don't hear that or or well, men, men men are removing their test testicles but they're removing it for a different you know it, it's this weird thing we have going on now where there is like they're trying they're highlighting you know and they're trying to bring out like not the best aspects of femininity and masculinity right like they're we're going through this stage where like you know women are being uh you know like all this weird stuff with feminism right where it's like we don't need men and all that kind of crap right, right. and then this other stuff going on where there you are seeing like a feminization in of, of men you know you're seeing like men with too much estrogen and men who are not um you know assertive in the way that men used to be so it's all this weird stuff there's a lot going on it, it it's it's a lot going on and it, it, it's you don't even know what to call it it's just a mixture of stuff now is it that is it that we're talking about this like oh there's just a lot of weird stuff going on what i look at is the orchestration of stuff is yeah. the fact that there are people who, who sit back and program reality and program mm -hmm. people's lives this is what i'm looking at how this gradual programming happens of a society 
-hmm. And that's what I'm looking at. Not like what you are because you think that's what you want to be. Fine. But what I'm looking at is at what point is this programming seeping in? And it's so subtle and it's so gradual that it all becomes normalized like pink and blue. It all becomes normalized. Nobody stopped to question, huh, what is this pink and blue? Who decided that? We all automatically, it's a baby. Oh, let's get pink. You buy pink. Oh my God, it's a boy. Let's get blue. Without any thought. And that to me, so people understand what I'm saying out there. Such this a program. Is, yeah. That's what I'm emphasizing is how someone else orchestrates um, the design of our, our, our of reality, our social then, our social constructs, um, our, our social programming, how it's gradually um, implemented and passed on gradually from one generation to the next. Now, since we weren't there when it switched, I think in the late 20s, the 1920s or whenever it switched, since you and I weren't there, we come into this life, pink is for girls, blue is for boys. All right. With yeah. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with no thought of, well, was that always like that? If we question everything, right. this is what I'm, I'm saying to people. A lot of what we think, it, when, how do you know that this is not the way it was? I mean, that this, it wasn't this way thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. History is written basically um it can it's just being written and changed at mm -hmm. all given times yep it's his story it's wh whoever is in charge is telling whoever's a story in, that's yeah. right that that's exactly what it is so so people get into this gospel like no that's that's what it says well were you there well and then people now like so you and i didn't know about the pink and the blue but when we when you and i were younger like it was really rare that somebody had cancer the people oh, who yeah, yeah, yeah. now just think everybody has cancer. So that's their mind control program. That's They're, a normalized. Yeah. So yeah. it's interesting that how that, that thing you're talking about is now sort of the symbol for this reality. That, exactly. You know, okay. Precisely what I'm talking about, Emily. This is important. This is important for people to really zone in on. Don't make it seem like this is like light what we're saying. It is very, very big because yeah. you you if you don't start questioning you don't know that what you believe is orchestrated you know and 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 completely further away from um an original truth or thought or whatever yeah and just think about the way all of these uh pink ribbons and all these just ribbons they're on food products. Like when you buy this one, this much money goes to that. Yep. They're on credit cards. They're credit everywhere. Card is how we, it's a current. It's the currency. It's yep. how energy is exchanged. So every time you swipe that Susan G. Komen Foundation yep. credit card, it's, it's adding to that, that loose, that whatever, you know, kind yep. of thing. So, you know, and when you have a, a, a sigil on your food, you're sort of eating something that has the energy of that on it. I mean, it, it is, is just everywhere. I won't yeah. buy stuff with it. I'm yeah. telling you, I wouldn't get these gym shoes I like just because they there's the last ones and they were pink. <laughs> 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 I was like, I'm like, on principle, I'm not getting those. Yeah. I'm just yeah. not getting those just because. Um, so, yeah. you know, so you take your stand where you take your stand because you know. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm not supporting that. So I'm not going to go with, with any of this. Um, but I, but I think, again, here it is. It's that asking question. It's that recognizing. And when I talk, when I've talked about, um, which we're not really getting into that yet, but when I've talked about the possibility of um, the birth to death program, that perhaps it's not that, you know, just based on what I have said, how things get changed, mm -hmm. how do you know that, this is what you believe is a reverse of, like you just said, it's, it's all reversed. What yeah. if that's not, not the way it has to be? But then some engineer, you know, have, have, well, engineer from outside of this time, one of them that came in, <laughs> one of those incredible <laughs> astronauts, um, 
you know, so, so there's that kind of engineering, um, which I could see how that could happen, uh, that, that can come in and be imposed on the human yeah. mind. You tweak that mind a well, little bit. Think about the, you hear, how often you hear the saying, there's two things you can't avoid, de death and taxes. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And, and that's the biggest, those are both the biggest mind control programs going, right? That they can be avoided, but no, you know, that's the whole, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What were you going to say? No, 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 no. That's true though. That is one of the biggest ones is that you think, and, and then the more you, when you say it back, when you say it, you're, you're, you're reaffirming that program. See, the programs need you to reaffirm them. Mm -hmm. And the more we reaffirm them and the more we, we, we affirm them with one another um, is the more they uh, crystallize, is the more they become cemented, the more that they're recorded in our being, in our minds, in our brains, in our cells, um, in our genetics, and we pass that information on. Because what? It's just we're nothing but a bunch of data anyway. We're nothing but a bunch of st streams of information. Mm -hmm. And we're passing, we just pass that information along. Eventually, yes, it becomes a, I'm going to say a command. It becomes a law, like yeah. everything else. It becomes a body it's law. law. Yeah. That's right. It becomes a body law and it becomes a mind law. So what we're talking about with the marketing, those things eventually become a law to our bodies, to our minds. It's mm -hmm. an acceptance, uh, like the common cold. Well, we all know Okay, well, you get a cold, big deal, the flu. Well, they're turning this yeah. cancer idea into that. Or, well, think you, about the marketing. Think about the way that they market the flu every year, right? Oh, they, yeah. They, flu, <laughs> flu season. Flu yeah. season. Like it's, a, like it's Christmas. It's like a holiday. <laughs> right? But, well, you can get, you, when you're, like, they, they're offering fl free flu shots when you go in to buy your Christmas stockings. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, they, they pitch that. I'm I'm waiting for them to offer that and a pap smear at um at at uh, what do you call it the airport um, TSA <laughs> <the> TSA right <laughs> right okay oh. so you said something just a second ago that will sort of you know we've gone off on an interest I, I love one of the things I love about talking to you is we go off on all these tangents and whatever but I wanted but they all <laughs> connect they all connect and something just pulled me over to sort of where I want to be. And you said that it creates a body law and a mind law. And I want to, as, as we're sort of winding down this first hour, talk a little bit, you know, because the last time we talked about the mind, you know, and some of the mind control and stuff like that. And one of the things that I learned through mm -hmm. sort of my health journey was how significant the control of the body is and control of the mind and what they have done with all of this stuff we've been bombarded with, with the, with the stuff with the food, with the stuff with the environment, with this, all the sounds and the Wi-Fi soup, it, it, it really is, I mean, we know there's a gut brain that sort of, I've come to the conclusion that most of the mind control actually ha starts, happens in the gut brain. And then this is just sort of like the, you know, where everything is stored and compartmentalized and, and, and whatever. Um, you know, you had a lot of really interesting people talking about a lot of really interesting things in your film, um, you know, how much do you think, I know what I think, do you agree with that, that really the control of the mind starts with the control of the body, that getting people to this place? I mean, for me, when I cleaned my diet up, when I got rid of the candida and all that stuff, all of the years of, of, of programming and mind control, and whatever, just started. Well, it clears your mind. Because, yeah. Yeah, the fog. I mean, you know, the fog and the freaking parasites and stuff pooping in your brain and your, in your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of fogs you up. Um, but I think that, yes, I think when it comes to health, yeah. health is the perfect place to attack because, and why is that? Because what is it that human beings cling to? Life, survival, mm -hmm. they want to live. This is our greatest fear is to, is to not live, is, you know, an annihilation, annihilation. And so, yes, the body, they come at the body. And naturally, if you think there's something wrong with your body, particularly if you are not used to um, a holistic process, you're immediately going to go to your doctor. You're going to go pharma the, the route of pharmaceutical drugs. You're going to do all of those things, which feeds that system. Mm -hmm. So 
they know you're you're not, you're gonna want to feel better. So yeah, you're gonna go with that. Well, you know, take this or take that or the commercials um, are a perfect example because they know that if they say these things enough times, even if you don't have fibromyalgia or um, lupus or what, yeah. lupus or whatever, you keep marketing enough with this with the sim the symptoms. People, there are people there who are going to start thinking that the symptoms that they have could be that. And, and for mm -hmm. some people over time, mind is powerful. It can it, actually yes. create that over time. They, they eventually, and they, and in a way they feel almost feel better because now they can, they have something they can name it. Um, they can apply a name to it. They can apply something to it. Uh, they don't realize that that's what's happening, but that's, that's what happens. So therefore you get the majority of those people running off to, um, they want to feel better. So yeah, you're going to, you're going to take what the prescription is. You, you want to feel better. If they advertised it, uh, you know, even though they say, ask your doctor if it's right for you, you know, could I have this? <laughs> right. But, th but we're not going to tell you that we're also giving your doctor a kickback to make sure it's exactly. right for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so the majority it, it's, it's less people, I think that are coming from the thought process that we're coming from in terms of, you know, mainstream. And so you have more people that are going to buy into the program and it is so necessary that you have as many people that are buying into, and I love the, the, those terms like buying into, um, buying into the program because it feeds the bigger system. It feeds the matrix. You can't have all these sovereign people running around. When I say sovereign, I'm talking from a true sense of the word sovereign. You yep. can't have all these people that question running around. You cannot have the majority um, running around free thinkers like that. You just can't do that. The, the, the game would collapse. And those who have been having the opportunity to feel like the elites, to feel like the wealthy people, to control, all that goes away. They need, you need those people in order for these experiences to happen, right? Yeah. And yep. so you have to keep the majority of people in a state of mind that is continuously external outside yeah, totally yep. outside of themselves yep um, that's it, yeah. yeah it becomes yeah. very necessary they want every i mean this goes for everything every yeah, everything thing, they want you to externalize everything mm -hmm. you know and we draw this we've talked about this a lot on the show like the whole purpose of space of the space program is to get people worried about what's out there instead of exploring what's oh, yeah. in here Oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole, you know, I I always like to say the, the secret about the secret space program is the secret is there's no space; it's just a program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all, it. it's all just a program, and it's yeah, yeah, and and it's fascinating because it just works over and over and over again. And as soon as people start to veer off a little bit, ooh, shiny red ball! They just keep bringing back a new shiny red ball. And this is how you know the stuff. I just want to circle back to a second for like what you were talking about, all these commercials for these pills, for fibromyalgia, for lupus, or these vaccines. This is, you know that you're being manipulated and BSed when on the commercial, they will tell you the side effects of the, the pill and it's worse than the actual disease or the actual problem. Right. And people are still thinking, this is a good idea. Like, right? Like they have a pill for depression and the, the side effect is it might cause suicide, right? It yeah, might yeah, cause right. death, yeah. right? Like, you know, and you know, the, they give vaccines to people for conditions that aren't deadly, but the vaccine can kill you. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how you know that this is all like a big game. And this is, you know, they're, they're telling you right to your face and people are still going. They always tell you. They always tell you. I mean, that's the game. They always tell you. But you're, you've been so inundated with programs and um, and, 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 and what? An inability to trust yourself and to your program, program to believe that someone else always knows what's best for you. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, so, so this programming of going outside of yourself because inside yourself, you don't have the information. Going outside yourself has been so, mm -hmm. uh, that's been the common theme. That's been the common theme. So 
yeah, it's it's easy for people to just go with that. And if and if we go telling them certain people, people that are really committed to uh, allopathic medicine, the the traditional as they call it medicine, and we're like, okay, they switch that too. Another- they, think about that. They've switched that. Oh too, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right. Like now the thing that was just invented last century, uh, uh, yeah. 200 years ago, that's traditional. And the yeah. holistic method that's been around since the beginning alternative. of time, that's yeah. alternative. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but people, these people who are committed to that institution and they trust it, um, yeah, they will have no, they will not hear of it if you say, well, you know, there's a treatment here that's natural uh, and it would help you. Uh, I don't know. I think I, you know, I, they don't trust it as much. Yeah. It's so they don't weird, trust it? it as much. They'd rather go with, cause they can't put it together, nature and your, their bodies. Yeah. You can't put those two things together. Um, and, and what you're offering is unnatural. Uh, it hasn't been proven. Oh, it's not, um, uh, approved by the FDA. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> It is like that's why you should take it because it's not approved by the yeah. FDA. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's all of that. So people are really caught in this 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 fog. People uh, like approvals and certifications and oh licenses oh and all God. this kind of shit. Matrix like, stuff. Like a lot of let, total matrix stuff. You know, and, and I've even, you know, been, you know, trapped and pulled into some of that with trying to, you know, move in the direction I'm trying to move with nutrition and you know finding that like there's not really that much interesting stuff going on where those letters are available and the interesting stuff going on is completely somewhere else but you know it's hard to exist in this realm but you have to play the game you have to yeah you know, cuz so we're not I'm not ever saying we don't don't play the game playing the game from an aware space is power yeah, yeah. When you are aware and you go okay I get it. I'm going in. I'm going into the game. I'm gonna. I'm going back to school, and I'm gonna get this doctorate. I know the BS that goes on, but I'm gonna get this doctorate so that I can navigate in their little matrix setup because I need this password because that's basically what that is, depending on what you're doing. This PhD or whatever it is, the degree is that you need becomes that um, that password or permission slip that lets you in. Um, to affect change if that's really what you want to do. Uh, so so we, we, we have to, I think it's important that we learn how the system works enough um, and what we do with it at that point. For, for children, you know, I, yeah, they need to go to school. Why do they need to go to school? They need to go to school, but it's important that they have parents that counteract or counterbalance what they learn in school and over here, inform them, okay, you're going there and you're learning, but that's based on the system and da 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 and all this other stuff. But here's the real deal. So you're going you're gonna to go in and you're going to learn how to operate basically in the lion's den. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta know how the enemy works. So you, you go in and you learn their way. You learn their way. The trick is though, is not to you know, you're just like you're deep undercover <laughs> not, not to buy into it not to not to get, oh, yeah, yeah not to take on not to start believing the character you've taken on for being undercover um but but i certainly think that it's important to to be able to have that and i think with children yeah you need to give them both uh, don't just go oh yeah don't go to school no no uh-uh. they need to know how this thing works they need to know how how that game gets played and that's why these um, what do you call it? These Ivy League schools um, work so well. That's why all these darn people that run everything um, are, you know, generally part of that little clique because they groom them. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they, in gave, a they, gave, way. they gave them a trivium education, which they don't give to the, the most of the sheeple. So they understand logic, logic, grammar, and rhetoric, and the order in which those things must occur. And so, yeah, that's you absolutely. Know, yeah, it's, it's it's a very so so we're we're dealing with you know so many different levels of the game. Yes, and it all comes back to your body because your brain is your brain is all part of that. And when your brain is foggy. And your brain will be foggy based on the consciousness, based, based on the consciousness. When I'm talking about consciousness, I'm talking about the, your level of awareness. 
um, which means your level of perception, the narrowness of your perception, uh, you know, uh, just all of that, how you're thinking, how you're living your life, how it impacts the body, um, how easily you may be, uh, what's the word? I, uh, programmed is one word, but that's not the word uh, I'm looking for, but sort of intercepted. Some yeah. people are more easily yeah. intercepted. Captured, captured. Yeah, captured um, than, than, than other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all based on brainwave, you know, um, as activity as well, because that's a lot of, a lot of what that kind of technology is dealing with is, is brainwave, you know, measurement which is why um, the, uh, what is it? The, um, that, uh, what is it again? Consciousness Research Project. Brain well, mapping, brain mapping. Yeah, there, well, that's why, you know, you know what I'm talking about. about. No, con- the conscious, con- well, in a way it is, but it's that Consciousness Research Project that comes out of Princeton. Okay. That, that they, um, they've been able to evaluate a, you know, uh, people, across the globe based on um, say something is something is going to happen. Say like when 9-11 was going to Oh, happen. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. There was an and uptick and everybody is sort of, yeah. Right. There's a spike. And, and that's, that's really, it's, it's brainwave activity. Um, now, did they, did they, were they able to capture everyone's brainwave activity or were they able to really capture brainwave activity according to, um, those people that were more accessible. Right. Um, but, and, and, and also on the other side of that though, is why did all the brainwaves spike at that point? So right there, we can see there is a point of connection across the board with human beings. There's a point where we're, it, there's this field, you know, mm-hmm. that, that we um, sort of uh, are connecting in the, the noosphere, as they call it, um, that we're sort of, you know, all of that is happening there. And we're able to tap into things that are going to come. Why? Because they've already happened. Yeah. Well, and, and that also, that raises the question that the, the engineers, the whatever people fucking around with this, are, did they pick then to do it because they knew the brainwave, you know, did it happen because the brainwave, the, the, there was the uptick or did, or did they do it because there was the uptick, right? Like which one was, which one no, is the it? chicken, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Um, well, if, if they did, weren't involved, if they weren't involved, say in something that was happening, say like 9-11 and they knew nothing about it, um, or 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 a, a a tsunami or coming or something a right. big earthquake and they had nothing to do with that e- either way one way or another either way human beings are tapping in to um all these different fields of yeah. information it's just what the brain filters yeah. but we are we are always tapping into to all potential realities so we technically can know what's going on yeah we right yeah, yeah. So, and I think, so they just happen to find that sweet spot, that space where the collective, the uh, collective, as they know, we know the collective to be, um, are, are, are on that same, same wavelength to be able to see that, to be able to capture, uh, you know, those um, brainwave patterns. Is it everybody? It's kind of like census counting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can tell you how many people, but no, because yeah, everybody yeah. don't get counted. Yeah. You know what I mean? So everybody is not being counted. There is that um, they try to give you the impression that everybody's counted. Yeah. And uh, and so these are the impressions that they give to us all the time, that they're all, it's like all seeing, like all yeah. knowing, we're watching you, we know everything you're doing. Well, actually you don't. It, it's, it's, it's the perception. You have yeah. to, how do you keep, all these people in control. You have to keep them thinking that we know everything that you're doing. We've got our eyes on you. We are watching you. It's all of that that becomes so important um, to keep people, you know, to keep, to keep people in, in a certain level of control. Yep. You got five people running, you know, 10 billion people. Yeah. How do you keep all of them in a, in a manageable space where you have to keep them divided um, and, make and, them keep all, them and make them feel they <laughs> make them think that they're completely surveilled and you keep them sick and you keep them good. Yeah. 
Yep. All right. So as let, we're going to wrap up this first this first segment here, um, and before we do, Sonia, just tell the tell tell the, the peeps where they can find you. And okay. uh, well, um, I'm currently coming to you from Mars, but um, <laughs> since I can't give out my Mars address. <laughs> <laughs> and the, she's the desert of New Mexico. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I can't give the coordinates, but you can find me, my information at the real Sonia Barrett.com and the real Sonia Barrett.com and uh, the documentary, the business of disease.com and the expansion zone.com. Yeah. It's your new radio show. You've had some yeah. interesting stuff going on over there lately. Mm -hmm. All right, and so those of you who haven't joined us yet, join us over at uh, over on patreon.com forward slash off planet media for the second hour. We're going to get a little bit weirder. We're going to talk about the birth to death program, and then we're going to talk about what if our bodies aren't natural? Some other yeah. weird stuff like that. All right, guys, we'll see you on the other side. All right, I'm going to I'm <laughs> sorry.